Hi guys, I'm Astrid Mueller, illustrator and brand designer, and I'm passionate about helping women entrepreneurs succeed. As you know, I'm, or you probably know, I'm also uh, author of the Startup Branding Insider, um, which is a free newsletter where I give lots of inspiration, um, resources, and tips all around branding and how to use it as a startup without a big budget um, and still do it right. So um, today I, uh, I'm going to feature something um, that came from one of my readers um, who got a really good question over to me. And um, I welcome you guys, by the way, to always share your questions, like leave a comment and tell me what, where you're stuck right now. Anything revolving around branding, I'd be happy to cover it if it fits in the newsletter. So I'm going to read her question to you real quick. So one of my readers, um, she owns a stationery company and she, she wrote to me, I'm in the process of figuring out my brand packaging when fulfilling invitation stationary orders. Although I have made my custom products more widely available to wholesale clients, I still want to make a great brand impression. That's a great question and I'd be happy to address that. So before you think about anything that relates to your packaging and how you can save money, um, I uh, would like to inspire you to take a step back and think about your brand first. Just make sure that you really know what your brand stands for and how you're different from competitors, that you know um, what kind of brand experience you'd like to create when your customers see you, um, how you set yourself apart. Um, in everything, the best brands, the big brands who do it right, and also small brands who do that, um, create a very unique brand experience where they they use the same, um, they create the same feeling in all the customer touch points, and um, that's something that you can do through branding. And to um, to sum it up real quick um, on how to do this, the real process takes longer, but it's possible to do it. And how you can do it is. Um, Start with the brand keywords. So think of your unique essence of your brand. Think what uh, what are the things that make you different from others. Let's say the stationery um, company example. Um, so for for instance, maybe your your stationery um, could be described as especially lavish. Well, that's your specialty. Or you could be focusing on the wedding industry. Or you um, you're really working with special papers or everything you do is handmade. Think what what is it that makes you different from others? Like why should they not go to, to one of the big suppliers? Um, and then really brainstorm on this and write down the, the top words that really describe for yourself what you stand for. So once you have those words, and I call them brand keywords, then uh, you wanna make sure that you really know your customers. And um, ideally, think of your customers super in a super narrow way like really dare to go niche and uh, try to picture the customer um, as if they're sitting in front of you like who is this woman or man like who are your customers are they are they new york are they new yorker ladies maybe uh, mid-20s to mid-40s or something and they're looking for super um sleek very luxurious invitations that are all custom or are they um, on a budget and they're looking for something quick, easy, fun, flourishy, um, um, that is like kind of a vintage sort of groove. Maybe they live um, um, all over the US and, and they want kind of a popular sort of direction and you really thrive on this. Is that your customer? Or is it um, uh, predominantly an, an LA audience and they, they really appreciate your your kind of LA groove in your stationery, and maybe there's a little bit of bling and lavish and posh feeling with it. Who is your customer? So again, like really take the moment and really think about this and uh, try to give her even a name for yourself, a fictitious customer or an example from a real customer that you have and, and remember who that lady is. So those are the two things, like first you have the brand keywords and then you have the customers that you really know who they are. Um, then, then you can think of the brand experience. Um, make sure you know how you like your customers to feel every time they're in touch with your brand. Um, and again, here to really help you set yourself apart from your competitors, it's really great if you can create a very unique experience and if you can do it consistently in everything you do. So let's say um, if you want to um, 
uh, with a stationary company example, maybe you would like to, uh, to, your customers always to feel like celebrating. Um, and um, let's say if they are in the wedding in the wedding industry and and that's your specialty, um, that could be a really good kind of a groove that you're trying to create because it matches the whole, you know, the whole the whole specialty that you have, right? Um, maybe if they're the New Yorkers and um, uh, the ladies who look for something very sophisticated and custom made. Um, and for my other example, for they, for those ladies, maybe you'd always have to have like an expensive sort of feel and they feel very pamper, um, not pamper, but like treated as, as very special customers and, you know, they have like very little time. They want to get something super special and, and a super um, time effective customer service, that kind of thing. So really think like what kind of experience is really best for your niche and your particular customer. And then when you have those three things, and I'm just going to narrow it down to those th three things for now for the branding, then you can start thinking about your packaging. Of course, you can go more in depth with everything, but if you do that, you already have a pretty good handle on, um, on uh, having the right mindset to find something that will be awesome. So now let's go to the saving saving idea like how can you get great packaging that fits to your brand and that doesn't cost a fortune so we can of course we can you can go look online and then look at the companies where you can get custom made packaging and all that but as startups we all have limited budget and you definitely don't want to jump at the first opportunity and just uh, purchase large quantities of packaging and spend a fortune it goes really fast so what, um, what I always recommend to my customers and what I've done for, for my customers and my own brands is um, to think, um, look for generic packaging that works with your brand colors, with the materials that fit with your brand feeling, but then, and then you personalize it. So if you can find um, packaging, that, uh, let's say, okay, here I have an example, actual example for you, for my own jewelry line, which is a independent designer jewelry line called Possibility. I was one of the emerging designers at Phoenix Fashion Week last year and I was so excited about that. Anyway, so I had to look for packaging and um, here's my packaging example as a startup emerging designer that I found for myself. So I found a black box, which is very universal box that works um, for many types of jewelry. So I'm going to open it up real quick. Um, Here's with a piece. Um, this was a multifunctional piece of choker, and it, it works as headband, um, and you can use it as a sash and put it on a on a scarf. All kinds of um, ways you can wear this. Um, so I'm taking this off to show you how um, how flexible my packaging is. So in this case, it's not the perfect solution, but it's it's still very nice presentation. So you'll see that. This insert here in the packaging has um, different slots. <coughs> excuse me, has different slots that work for different types of jewelry, which was very important for me because I didn't want to have large stock of different types of packaging um, for all the eventualities that I would need. So here I could um, I could put earrings in this, and here are slots that I could stick um, cufflinks in. This I could use for rings. So this was a very appealing um, solution for me. And um, normally I do use it for pendants and, and whatnot, but like this was a special limited edition piece. And even here it worked. Um, Cause inside um, I have these, I have these ribbons inside. And, and in this case, it was a piece that, um, that works with ribbons. So I could, could have the piece in there plus the, the additional ribbons that you can um, use to exchange exchange your ribbons with a piece, right? Okay, so that's an example. And I'm going to show you too, like how I personalized this black box to my brand. So I created with Moo, everybody knows Moo nowadays, right? So I had um, logos printed and uh, on the back side, I incorporated my brand message. So here um, is a quality guarantee card. I'll zoom in real quick. Where here, where you can see, um, you know, that I uh, each piece is handmade, quality approved, and so on. Um, that information was my contact information that people could could get back to me. 
And then I have a, a, um, another card that has the spirit of possibility written on here. I'll show it to you real quick. So the spirit of possibility kind of explains the brand feeling and the brand mission and groove that I have behind my brand. I'm going to read it to you real quick. Um, the spirit of possibility. Your new jewelry is inspired by possibility, by limitless horizons and opportunities. May this feeling be with you every time you wear it. And then my website. So this is a way of, um, with a hand tied ribbon, of personalizing generic packaging and make it very special. And when I, when I used this, um, this packaging at trade shows or at the fashion week and gave it to people, I could always explain to them, hey, and this is the good luck, the good luck card. This is what I'm all about. This is what this means. And people love that. They love to have, um, they love to buy from rents that they um, want to support. Um, of missions that they understand and relate to. So if you have something special, a special message for your own brand, that's a great way um, of adding the, add this to your packaging and um, to add it to the customer experience. Um, I have uh, another example where, um, okay, I did a brand design project for a customer. She was opening a Caribbean restaurant in Brooklyn, New York, and she was on a super limited budget. And in her instance, I created one of the brand design concepts was um, to use standard brown bags for her food packaging and um, take home bags, but to work with stamps. And so um, this Caribbean restaurant, uh, one of her brand feelings was that it's very vibrant and, and you know, full of color and like sp happy spirit of life and all that stuff. So um, I'm going to show you on my blog, you'll see examples um, of the spirit, like with, with yellow stamps and uh, orange stamps and to kind of like incorporate those as an addition to the generic packaging and to use like in different brand communication things even. So um, those stamps would have been for the packaging but also like to use on postcards with actual stamps kind of this whole vacation feeling as if you're in the caribbean um and the the paper choice there was um to to give this kind of homemade sort of feel as well so everything was really thought through from the brand um down to the packaging without spending a fortune um i have another example where um i designed for a food uh, not food truck sorry a <laughs> i must be getting hungry <laughs> Um, I was designing for um, a fashion truck in LA um, and I also have the link on my blog along with this video um, where also the startup budget was kind of limited and in that instance we created a sticker that she was able to use on the, on the packaging, the, the handbag, uh, the bags, the bags to take the fashion home. Um, the, the sticker would have um, kind of the, the brand logo on it. Um, so you could use the bag as this, but the sticker could also be taken home as a fun take home item. So also um, use it in many different ways. Um, so when you spend something, always think resourceful. That's always a great idea. And if you can combine things in many ways, even better, right? So these are three examples. Uh, sorry, just wanted to quickly cheat. If I forgot anything important, give me one second. Okay, I talked about the resources, be resourceful, um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think that's about it. So these are a few examples of how you can be super resourceful. One a last one maybe is to, um, before you go and uh, just spend like hours and days or whatever to, to look around for ideas and stuff, you can also consider, find a designer and talk to your designer, like, tell them what budget you have, what kind of solution you're looking for or what you need, what's your predicament. Designers thrive on this kind of thing and they often have a lot of resources that they've already used and they can uh, develop um, innovative concepts um, and help you with all that. So um, for instance, if you want, you can look at my website if it resonates with you. Uh, feel free to sh shoot me an email and tell me your situation. I'll be happy to help you and uh, work with your budget as much as I can. Um, I love creative challenges like this, so I'll be very happy to help you. Um, so I hope I answered your question with the branding for your packaging here. Um, if you guys have more questions, like do email me anytime or leave a comment on my blog, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll be happy to, to feature it in one of the next Startup Branding Insider newsletters. 
thank you guys and have a great weekend. i'm going party now. it's friday bye-bye